Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're talking about the authorities or the cosmic ruler over the present darkness. Mm-hmm. Yep. And in this class, hmm? I was going to say it's some interesting stuff we're finding out. Yeah, because in this class, we're going to show you what these powers are and even who are the ones who's actually ruling these powers or using these powers for our rule these days. And we're also going to point you in the direction, rather the book, as to how you can thwart or resist these powers. Yep. Talking about the Testament of Solomon. We're going to come right over there. Before we do, go ahead and read um, this verse. But if you would, read it out of the English Standard Version. Okay. This is Ephesians 6 and 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We're being taught evil from our churches. That's mm -hmm. what it looks like to me. Okay. These mm -hmm. forces are in heavenly places or in churches, and they're actually teaching darkness from our pulpit. Yeah, we are learning and pulling out scripture and information, wisdom, that a lot of things that's going on in the church that we did not know about. And I don't believe many of them know exactly what's going on. Absolutely not. But anyway, hopefully some people will be enlightened by what's going on, how we are trained in this cosmic powers of present darkness. By the time we get to the end of this video, some of this will make sense, hopefully. But to get started, let's come over to the Testament of Solomon. Okay. Now, we've already done a few classes out of the Testament of Solomon, trying to understand these seven spirits. Like we said, we believe that these are the same spirits that infested uh, Mary Magdalene back there. Um, but the Testament of Solomon is the only place that we could find out some information about these seven spirits. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to do so. You see him talking about them down there in verse 34, where he's kind of just naming them. Um, what's important that we need to understand is that the fourth one there is jealousy. But anyway, let's come over here and let's look at the description of them. Matter of fact, read verse 35. 35. But I, Solomon, questioned them one by one beginning with the first and going down to the seventh. The first said, I am deception. I deceive and weave snares here and there. I will and excite heresies, but I have an angel who frustrates me, Lamechiel. So this first demon, this is um, deception. And I should have actually let you read verse 34. Let's come back to verse 34 because it says something important about these seven demons. We see that they're feminine demons bound and woven together. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read verse 34. And I glorified God afresh who gave me this authority and ordered another demon to come before me. And there came seven spirits, females, bound and woven together, fair in appearance and comely. And I, Solomon, seeing them, questioned them and said, Who are ye? But they, with one accord, said with one voice, we are the 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is where we ended up starting this class from. You see right there where it says they are the 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of darkness. We are of the, yeah, we are of the 33 elements. Mm -hmm. Now, Stacey, I believe you have to help us out as far as how we got to this point. Um, well, I wanted to, you know, define the 33 elements and so I started doing some Googling um, of the 33 elements and I just basically put in those words and it led me uh, through different websites um, that it could possibly be dealing with the 33 or 36 elements of the uh, masonry. And so I brought that to your attention to see what you think about it and we went from there. Now, of course, I found it very interesting that these 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of darkness can be associated with masonry or Freemasonry. But when I started looking down through here, it started to make sense what this is all talking about. And I believe this is what Ephesians is talking about when it says we fighting against the rulers or the authorities mm -hmm. over this present darkness. Um, it seems to me that these are the exact same 
elements used in Freemasonry or the Scottish Rite or Illuminati or all of that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, I mean, you have to understand the story of the Knights of the Templar who would have been the grandfathers of all of these fraternal organizations, how they went into Jerusalem and sat there on the Temple Mount for so much time before they gathered enough of whatever they wanted that they then took it to the Pope. And they have been the rulers of this world ever since. Mm -hmm. So something that they found in the bottom of that temple um, has allowed them to take over the world. Yeah, because um, I think we read in the Testament of Solomon how Solomon actually caged these spirits in vials. Yeah, he's put and, them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was bringing the um, thought to you as to what if they uh, found these vials and actually took on the spirits took on the degrees took on the elements of these different demons and it that's consistent you know because like we said that these knights of the templar spent some time there on the temple mount before they rushed back to the pope who like i said gave them authority based on whatever it was that they found um and solomon like you were saying he was kind of the original ghost blusters mm -hmm. where he was able to mm -hmm. catch these demons but then he put them in the bottom of the temple and so these demons would have remained in the bottom of the temple, in the basement of the temple, down there where this stone is, until these knights of the Templar went in and found their way to um, get these demons. Right, and we asked ourselves, well, you know, what does it have to do with us? But we have to remember that our, quote, founding fathers were, you know, a part of this organization. And, you know, these are the rulers, these are the um, officials that are over us today. Well, you see... Like it says here that America, the American Revolution was in 1782. Mm -hmm. Well, you find that the Masons was actually, Freemasonry was founded in 1717. So it was an organization before this country was actually went into existence. Right there at the same time. When you think right. about how much time it would have been uh, needed for them to develop their plans for establishing America as the new world or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's like, hey, 1717 was the beginning of this revolution, mm -hmm. which, you know, came to a head in about 1775 and ending in about 1782. Mm -hmm. America has been established now. Well, what do you think about, you know, you know, this being the promised land, they actually used these spirits to or brought these spirits over here to the promised land well i can say that they brought their spirits in and we're getting a little yeah. bit ahead of ourselves um okay. these spirits don't necessarily need to travel you know across water on a ship or a boat right. they're already in the <laughs> air and yeah. you know all it takes is for these people to summon these spirits mm -hmm. you know they're doing the same thing over there now with cern over there in europe as they're trying to uh, summon those demons here and it could be very well the same demons bring them into materialization right yeah. that's what the god product was all about they're actually trying to give these demons physical form that's what the higgs boson is and i wonder what do they think do they, do they actually think they're going to have control over them well it's not so much as control but you have to understand what the fallen angels did for humanity in the first place you know they taught them all of these um different um esoteric knowledge that you know I mean, humans weren't supposed to have in the first place um including abortions how to make war how mm -hmm. to do all of these devilish things well it was the fallen angels who taught humanity this right. technology well humanity is still hungry for this technology and now, still, still wanting to be taught this stuff. Still wanting to be taught this. So now they're still trying to summon these spirits back. Like I said, CERN is over there trying to materialize these demons in order to gain this knowledge that they want. Okay. You got to remember those are the same people that invented the internet in the first place. Mm. Well, these technologies are necessary for what it is that they're trying to do or trying to create. And like I said, it seems like they're hell bent on materializing these demons. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's come back over to these particular demons that we're reading about over in here in the Testament of Solomon. Now, we always want to bring this part out, how they're feminine bound together, because like we said, these are the same demons that were infesting Mary Magdalene over there. These feminine demons uh, come as a set. 
The first one, of course, is deception, which would include the spirit of lying. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is strife, which is arguing. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is battle, which is fighting. Right. And then the fourth one is jealousy, followed by the fifth one, which is power. The sixth one, which is air. And then the seventh one, which, you know. It's just called the worst of all. Yeah, it's the worst <laughs> of all. There's no recovery from that. But the thing about it, like you see, they're all part of these 33 elements here. Mm -hmm. These demons are all part of these 33 elements. And like we said, these 33 elements seem to be tied to Freemasonry to an extent, if not the founding elements of Freemasonry. So I came over and tried to get the information that I could about Freemasonry and how it appears to be connected. And you guys can help me out, but what it seems as though is that these Freemasons have harnessed these demons mm. and are using them for their benefit. Mm. In other words, the three first levels of being a Freemason seem to be allowing these people to tell lies or deceive us without the repercussions surrounding it. Mm -hmm. Well, let me come back over. And let me show you what I mean. The first demon says that her name is Deception. Right. And she's allowed to deceive, uh, to weave snares here and there and so forth. Right. Well, you remember that the first rule of Freemasonry is to keep secrets. Secret society. It's a secret society. And so the first thing that they tell them to do when they come through the door is to be deceptive. You know, if anybody asks you questions to... Um, give them deceptive answers or to don't tell them at all simply by being a secretive society deception is necessary it's mm -hmm. a necessary part of that right mm -hmm. but like we read in verse 36 after deception comes strife mm -hmm. you know you've basically told me a lie now we have to argue about this lie right well the next level after secrecy or deception is fellowship Mm -hmm. So now the Freemasons are basically teaching them when strife appears as a result of deception. Right. We can now handle this strife without actually getting into an argument. Getting into battle. And well, battle comes next. Mm -hmm. But again, that's where you get down into the Master Mason part, which they talk about maturity. Okay. Their maturity is basically how to deal with with battle now mm -hmm. so because we've already learned this is how it works the first thing that appears is deception or a lie is told mm -hmm. well this lie is going to result in strife or an argument if only just to clear up the deception mm -hmm. we have some but they're trained it appears to me I haven't been down to the mason hall but it appears to me that these people are trained to deal with the strife that comes next mm -hmm. so that's why you can have a politician or a preacher man or somebody else to tell a lie, but yet they don't get into a huge argument over it like the common man would. Right. The common man can't tell a lie without having to deal with strife mm -hmm. unless they've been trained in this whole fellowship thing by the Masons. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing with the third level, which is maturity. You cannot get past the fact that we're going to go to war over this lie you just told. Mm hmm because of the maturity, you can now get around it or ignore it and so, go on. So they can stand well, so they can put into action the um, saying of it takes two people to argue. It takes, it takes two people to battle. Two, fight. two people, right. And so basically they are being trained to avoid this battle and this fight. Right, because so, of their maturity. Because of their maturity. And that's the way it appears, you know. Here they are standing behind the lectern, the pulpit, whatever it is, behind the judge's bench, whatever it is mm -hmm. that these Masons have, you know, put themselves in. They can now lie from that position. The judge can say, tell a lie from that position. And because he has this fellowship and this master Mason level, he doesn't get into strife and he doesn't get into battle. He's not sitting up in there arguing, banging on his, his gavel, you know, threatening him to put somebody in jail because of this lie he's just told. So now you're looking like a 
angry lunatic and he's sitting there calm and tranquil exactly. and mature. Exactly. Yeah. So essentially what they've done is train these people to be able to lie to us and we not even notice it. Right. We, like you said, the person who has caught on to the lie and is willing to argue about it, even, you know, fight about it. He's the one that the judge is going to have hauled off to jail mm -hmm. and everybody's going to say, what's wrong with him? You know, what's he, he's just angry yeah. when essentially, no, we've basically cast this demon on him through deception. And because he hasn't gone through our program and picked up on these teachings that we have. He's not prepared for it. And so he's going to start arguing and he's going to start fighting. And then we're just going to lock him up and put him in jail. Those are the ones that, you know, they slam down the gavel and says he's in contempt. And he mm -hmm. gets thrown into, you know, the holding cell. And like you said, everybody who's on the own watches are like, you know, he deserved it. You yeah, know? because, mm -hmm. yeah, because he's the one that's belligerent. Right. He's the one seems to be causing the problems. So I think you're onto something when you have identified a connection between these 33 elements and the cosmic rulers of darkness and the spirits here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what about the verse that talks about the 36? Are there two extra ones, well, three extra ones that we're forgetting or we don't know about, or is that not part, does it, is there 33 or are there 36? Do we know? Degrees to. Okay, so. now, first of all, you have to understand right here what it's saying, but they, with one accord, said with one voice, we are of, we are of the 33 elements of the cosmic ruler of darkness. So that lets you know that there are more. There are definitely more. Right. And in fact, like you said, when you ta start talking about the 36, you find out down in 72 that there are actually 36 of these these spirits. I wonder, because these groups are usually very charitable, I wonder if the other three are good. No, you've the 33 degrees of masonry is basically what it takes to be a mason. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody but the Masons know that there's actually three extra degrees in Masonry. Okay. You, you don't really start to understand who or what a Mason is, even though you've been through all of this programming. You don't know what a Mason is until you get to the 34th, 35th, and 36th levels of Masonry. Okay. You let, until then, you're just a student. You know, that's why there's going to be people in the comment section saying, I don't think the Mason is this, or they don't teach us down the Mason. No. You just haven't faced who it is that's sitting in the north yet. You know, you haven't gotten to that point to know who that is that's sitting over there. It's not an empty chair, you know. So the other three could possibly be even worse. Well, they possibly are worse. Yeah. They're the definitely other. worse because, like we said, you don't find out who sits in the north until you get to the 32nd, the 33rd degree, the 34th degree. It's when you find out what you've been working for. And what it appears to me is what they've been working for is to conquer these demons here. I wonder if, and this is just me because I don't know anything about it, if this is when there is actually uh, bloodshed that's actually being, being, you know, because you hear a lot of people saying that they had to make a sacrifice or um, something of that nature. No, I don't know, you know. I think you may know more about masonry than I do. I don't. <laughs> I'm um, just going by here to say. <laughs> but mm -hmm. there's definitely some stuff here. And basically what we're learning is that, okay, they start off with deception. Like I said, the first thing they teach you to do is lie. Mm -hmm. And then they teach you how to cover up the lie. But when you get into the rest of these 33 or 36 demons, I believe what they're doing is teaching them how to take advantage of these deceptive spirits, but yet not feel the pain behind them. Because you know, this book goes into detail telling us how to deal with these certain demons and stuff that we actually manifest through lying and deception and all it is. Well, they go on as part of their training to tell them how they now have to deal with these symptoms that they're gonna get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, a lot of our um, family members, a lot of our brothers, our fathers, our granddads, our grandmothers uh, are Masons. Nice. How do we how do we handle them? How do we how do we you know meet them at the uh, family reunion? Oh, like I said, you have more familiarity with Masons because none of my family members are Masons. Mm -hmm. Nobody that I know of. You know, I've seen some weird looking pictures, you know, of, um, matter of fact, that was your granddaddy that had his arm, hand stuck in his shirt and all of that. So indicating that he could have been a Mason or whatever. But I really haven't had to deal with them. And my first mind is you don't, you mm -hmm. know, because, you know, like we was talking about the seven, once they get to that seventh level, there is no return, maybe. I don't know. Um, I did come over here and try to look at the higher orders. Those were the first three that tells you how to lie to a man to his face. Mm -hmm. But then you get into the fourth levels um, of masonry down there in the seventh level provost or judge. It appears to me as, you know, these different levels could be teaching you um, how to deal with these 33 demons or these 36 demons. Like you said, how to tell lies and not be subject to the demons that come with it. Well, you know, you said that there is no return. Well, you know, we always want to think that there is a there is a return because, I mean, there's always, I guess, repentance and actually to just, you know, repent of this stuff. And I don't know. What do you say about that? Well, you see down here where the seventh says, I am the worst of all and are stars in heaven. Seven stars humbled in sheen and all together. And we are called as it were goddesses. And I believe that's why we don't see the name in the 36s because it doesn't have the same name here. But you see out here in verse 41, the seventh one says, I am the worst of you. Go ahead and read verse 41. Likewise, also the seventh said, I am the worst, and I make thee worse off than thou was, because I will impose the bonds of Arthemus. But the locust will set me free, for by means thereof is it fated that thou shalt achieve my desire. For if one were wise, they would not turn his steps toward me. So while the other ones offer solutions, like you see there in verse 40, it's saying that the angel Uriel will thwart that particular demon of error. Mm -hmm. Well, you see down here, it says, for if one were wise, he would not turn his steps toward me. Right. And what it's talking about there, those locusts, that's when Solomon, mm -hmm. toward the end of the book, made a sacrifice of three locusts mm -hmm. right and there was basically no turning back at this point they basically made a clown out of solomon and so this is why i'm saying there is no return after that point once you start making sacrifices unto idols it's you know you're pretty much at the whim of those demons that you've called on mm -hmm. so sure the mason is down there in the third level all he's really good at doing is lying you know has he gone on to make these sacrifices to these devils how far has he rode the goat you know so there could be no hope for him mm. you know so how do you deal with him at the family reunion well i guess i'm just glad they ain't at my family reunion <laughs> well at least they're quiet you know mm. so i don't have to really deal with them but you know here on the bible belt where it seems as though every church has a mason hall in the yard Basically, these two buildings go together down here in Alabama. You do not see a church unless there's a Mason Hall right next door almost. Yes, it's definitely prevalent um, to a lot of the um, so-called African-American churches. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just not the African-Americans. It's all over. Even the conservative Baptists or the Southern Baptists, mm -hmm. who was made up more of Caucasian right. practitioners, 14% of the pastors and 18% of the deacons are Masons. Mm -hmm. So, like we said, essentially, these people are trained to lie. This is why they're able to come into church and say stuff like, um, Jesus did away with all of the laws and the rules, and then there's not a huge fight down there at the church. Mm -hmm. These Masons have been trained to lie. And like I said, they've been trained to deal with the strife that comes after the lie and to deal with the battle that comes after the lie. So, 
It is true. The Freemasons that I do um, know of, because I don't know them personally, are um, deacons, you know, in well, the church. They're part of the church. They're, they have the whole positions in the church. The deacons actually supposed to be the ones running the church. They're, they're the head guys in the church. Mm-hmm. They're not just collecting the money, but they actually, the pastor, he's really just supposed to be a figurehead. Right. Kind of, you know, somebody who looks good and sounds good, but he's supposed to actually get his instruction from the deacons. Mm-hmm. They're actually mm-hmm. supposed to, they, the deacons are kind of like the priests. It seems like all of this stuff is now, at this age of time, coming together where we're understanding and, you know, internet has its good things, but, you know, there has its bad things as well. But thanks to the internet, we're able to find out a lot of this information and put it together and actually see, you know, who's teaching us. And, you know, you can see some of the fallacies that they are teaching us and why they're teaching us this. And it all seems to stem around um, Satan's plan. Yeah, definitely Satan's plan. That's what they mean by riding a goat. They're riding the goat to success. Mm-hmm. This, this is how they have made or gotten themselves in these successful positions. It's by riding this goat. And it turns out this goat that they're riding are these demonic spirits. They are um, basically being trained, systematically and professionally trained, how to harness the power of these demons. Right, well, you know what, I'm just sitting here thinking how you actually do were associated with a few masonry. Who was that? Those in the military. Oh, well, they weren't trying to teach me the Bible, though. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah I'm just saying, there was I'm a lot thinking, of do, you, do you see any of their characteristics? Um, uh, a lot of those were very ambitious. Yeah, but and, it was, they they were really all only about military ambition, though. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it didn't come across as odd or strange at all. Right. right. You know, even that they were moving up through the ranks pretty quickly. Right. Because a lot of those same guys were... They were studying a yeah. lot harder mm-hmm. than me and doing a mm-hmm. lot more, yeah. you know, special forces and jump school and all of that other stuff that didn't. So it didn't seem strange that they were moving up through the ranks faster than me because I was I was into the clubs and stuff. Right. But do you think that their masonry status have anything now looking back now? Do you have it, think it has anything to have done with what they're moving up? Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, that's part of the brotherhood. Is that they look out for one another, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what they're doing in these churches. That's why they have put each other in these positions in these churches as a brotherhood, promoting their agenda through nepotism, so to speak. But the thing about it, when it gets to the churches, it's on a whole nother level. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, it ain't like we're out there in a battlefield with these materialistic bullets. Now you're talking about spiritualist bullets. Right. And these hurt a lot more. Yeah, a lot more dangerous. Right. But the same thing, they're using deception in order to promote their agenda. Mm-hmm. And the only difference is they know how to do it. And that's the what I'm learning here based on this study is how they're actually learning how to conquer these. Because anybody could tell a lie. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, what's going to happen after you tell a lie? Mm -hmm. We're going to end up arguing about it. That's just the way it works. Yes. Well, they know how to learn in fellowship, not to argue, learning how not to fight through maturity. And then on up through these 33 levels, these people have been trained as rulers of the cosmic powers of darkness. And they can actually harness this. Well, the rest of us. We would lose control of it too quickly. Well, let me just tell this little story about how, you know, we have um, a particular, you know, Masonic figure that, you know, works at this um, governmental uh, location. A post office. (laughs) I'm sure he doesn't work watching any of your videos, but... and, you know, you would go in there and have conversations with him and just putting this here and seeing how it works, the maturity part. And I was like, why, why is he always picking on that man? You know, the guy always just walks away and, you know, he seems to, you know, he has his calm voice. Well, you know, you and, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, why, why he always got to be picking on? But he has this maturity mm-hmm. 
and he's able to walk away. So now in my eyes, you're looking like the angry quote yeah. lunatic and his and him who's been lying or deceptive. He's looking like the mature, older, kind guy. Yeah. The kind of guy that you want <laughs> yeah. down there running your post office. Right. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. So when it lies and it deception makes his head you know not, everybody's not gonna get there in their fight yeah you know so yeah mm -hmm. absolutely i haven't been trained in deception yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i hope i never get trained in deception <laughs> you know because you know basically we need to learn how to deal without deception and mm -hmm. so this is what's actually going on here this is why you know these guys are getting exposed right now because you know we're about to get rid of this and that's why they're working so hard to deceive people in this time Right. Basically trying to um, cash in. You remember just this technology, the information I'm getting from these fallen angels is not free information. Right. They have to pay up. Yes, and, it's time to pay up. And now, yeah, absolutely, it's time to pay up. And it kind of starts with these, these first ones. Here, deception, strife, clothed or battle, jealousy. Power, error, those are the feminine spirits all woven together as one. You know, it seems as if a lot of these spirits do take on the um, uh, female gender. We think about the virgins, we think about the, the powers, and now we're having these um, cosmic darkness, dark spirits um, that are, have the female mm -hmm. attributes. It definitely should be recognized that these are feminine spirits. You don't really see, and I know what people are going to say when I say this, but you don't really see a grown man telling lies too often. He said, well, I know plenty of grown men. In my book, he's not a grown man. What is he lying for? Grown men don't have to lie. No, you, know? you always say that. Yeah. You don't have to. A person lies to either save face or save their butts. Mm -hmm. And a grown man don't need to do neither one. He ain't got to save his face and he ain't got to save his butt because he ain't scared of none of y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a feminine spirit that makes a person need or feel like they need to tell a lie in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, all of these are feminine spirits. You know, it starts with deception, then comes strife, then comes. And the basic way it works, once a lie is told, right. you have the opportunity to clear the lie up. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to clear the lie up, or well, if you can't clear the lie up, let's say the lie was told on television, you could argue with that television all day long. It's not going to, you know, the person talking ain't going to hear you or change what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So after the lie has been told, now you got strife to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, and you could be there arguing with yourself. I can't believe so-and-so said this. I can't, that's strife. Well, you may have, you know, there's strife in the air. And the thing about it, you have to get past the strife. You see that there, it says the angel Baratiel, um, towards the strife mm -hmm. um, based on my research that second Baroque the book of second Baroque which basically takes the fight out you know there, there's no need to fight once you once you understand second Baroque you know just you realize that these people are on a certain trajectory and there's nothing really you can do about it you might as well just step out of their way and let them go ahead and just tell their lies instead of trying to correct it which is only going to end up in an argument mm-hmm well, go ahead. I was going to say, so, you know, you turn on the television and you see the media this blatantly just telling lies. You can sit there and try to argue with them or, you know, make your point, not just not to them, but, you know, to whoever will listen to you. Y'all fighting over a Republican, Democrat, or he said this or he, she said that to just thwart it by um, being able to to call on this angel. Absolutely. And so that's where a second Baruch comes into play. But if you don't, if you can't get past that, then you're going to get into battle, which could be fighting, but it could also be as much as banging your hand on the table. Or it could be trying to overtake the White House. Or the insurrection. <laughs> yeah, I guess Just that'll... Because, yeah, you know, yeah. lies the first lie. Um, I think that actually comes in down there with power. Okay. Yeah, because it's one thing to be running your mouth. It's another thing to be running the country. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but Pat, before that, you get into jealousy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the jealousy actually brings on additional demons. 
Mm -hmm. This is the demon that takes away your sobriety and your moderation. Mm -hmm. Basically taking this man, because this one, even though this is a feminine spirit, it starts to have an effect on the man. First of all, taking his sobriety or his his calm state of mind, you know, making him a little bit arrogant or making him uh, haughty or delusional or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, the true definition of being sober goes away. And then after that, it starts to affect his moderation. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I think this these two right here depends on who the person is. Um, if yeah, he, personality. If he is immodest then his sobriety is what's going to be affected as he becomes arrogant and haughty and delusional. Mm -hmm. But if he has a little bit of modesty, then he's not so quick to become arrogant, but he may find himself in a state of addiction mm -hmm. or his moderation may go away. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's some other demons associated with this too. How he's separating the family and the wife, mm -hmm. making them want to break up. You the know, children, it's children from their parents. Want, wants to leave the house or the parent want the children to leave their house. These are additional demons that are being brought in here under jealousy. Mm -hmm. You see right down there, it says, uh, Bothiel is what gets rid of jealousy. Right. Now that's the spirit of forgiveness. Yes. So yeah, all you really have to do to conquer any of this is take on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Either the person who's being jealous, once they gain a forgiving heart, the jealousy part goes away. But then the person who is the victim of this and is forgetting the sobriety and moderation, if he too can take on forgiveness, he doesn't get affected by these demons so quickly. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness conquers that. But like the other one, this other one up here, Clothed, that's Merrimoth. That's the Lord of Lords is what that basically is. So that's basically praying right there. Mm -hmm. So if the person who is being deceived can't get past the strife and find themselves in battle. If they don't stop and pray in that moment, then they're going to end up in jealousy, which is going to start tearing their family apart. And if they then can't thwart it through forgiveness, then they're going to end up in this power where our power is actually going to give them strength to do stuff. Like I said, it's one thing to be running your mouth. It's another thing to be running the country. Right. And so now they're actually doing damage. Mm -hmm. Right. But this angel right here is associated with the fertility God somehow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm trying to understand what this is. I have my own beliefs on what this is right here. But I believe this is a way to take away her power through the acts associated with the fertility God. If you can put two and two together. Okay. If mm -hmm. you can't send me an email. <laughs> help you out in the fight at yahoo.com but if you know you don't understand this part right here and then you go into error which is where you're going to actually start doing bad stuff you have she has this power and now she's going to start using this power to actually do stuff right getting people put in jail getting people fired um there's something, you know, that comes with the power mm -hmm. and it points to Uriel here, mm -hmm. who um, is the angel of repentance. Yeah. In the Testament of Solomon, it talks about how um, this error, the spirit of error, uh, told Solomon that he was, you know, he says, I was with you when you killed your brother. Yeah, that's so, what actually caused mm -hmm. him to kill the brother. Right. And so if you can't get past that, if you end up killing your brother and still yet are headed down this path then you end up in the seventh element which is said is the worst of all and you're better off not going there because you're not going to be able to to correct it well like i believe the um freemasons are learning how to conquer these demons and able to use deception in order to fulfill their agenda and not feel the pain behind it they're, they're not alcoholics down there Mm -hmm. at the mason hall mm -hmm. you know so how are we um this lesson how are we able to use it today um for our best advantage well i believe the main thing that we need to get out of this is these seven demons here mm -hmm. because they are the first ones they are the doorkeepers without any deception these other demons have a hard time with their plans it's like you know going back to the shepherd of Hermes. it's like their sisters you know, woven together as with the virgins, you know, their sisters, one harp upon the other, upon the other, upon the other. 
And it seems as if these are the same. If you can't get over deception, you know, the next sister is coming through. Right. And so us as the common man, we have to get ahead of these because, um, like I said, it kind of takes the footing away when you're not really ready to um, allow deception in your life. These other demons have a hard time making their way in. You know, they need deception to make its way in first before strife and battle and jealousy can ever come on the scene. So I believe this is where our work is, is to get ahead of this, but then understand that these other, these rulers of the darkness of these world, these people who are committing these devilish acts in our churches or whatnot, we have to recognize them having taken advantage of the rest of these demons that are being talking. Not only have they learned to deal with these seven without them causing any problems, but they've gone on to the other 29 of these things and are training them in different degrees of masonry, 36 degrees of masonry. They're learning how to harness the power of these demons. I think one of the important things also that we should understand about this lesson is that we can't, you know, have these, you know, you always saying we can't have these these demons in part of the kingdom. We can't. They definitely not going. They're not going over. No, no. They, and that's why, um, like I said, there's, this is why they're being exposed now is because they're not they're not going over and they go for the, all of us. If we're not willing to get rid of deception, we're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. We even learned that in the Shepherd of Hermes. Mm -hmm. um, it is one of the most pernicious of the demons is lying. Mm -hmm. But it, lying is necessary for the new world order. They're not going to be able to do what they're doing without lying to us. And that's why they have so many false flag attacks. Um, so many just flat out lies. Well, these Masons, they're able to harness this and not fall victim to it like the rest of us if I was to get up and tell a lie right now you know the comment section is about to raise up you know which people get on there and you know say this say that you know you're lying about this you're lying about that well these Freemasons they don't have to worry about that they've harnessed that they're able to go on like you say the guy at the post office he's able to pleasantly walk away whereas somebody who's not trained no we're about to fight But as far as getting them out of your churches, that's going to be harder. You can see some of the major church groups that tried to get rid of them over the past. But like the Southern Baptists, you know, a lot of them softened their stance and basically said it's up to the parishioners to decide who they want to listen to or not. Mm -hmm. So if you go to church, you could very well be listening to Masons. Right. You're definitely going to be on the deception, whether the people know about it or not. The only mm -hmm. question is, you know, are you guys going to get into an argument over this deception down there in that church? But the bad thing about it is if you don't get into, uh, and I say it's deception, I mean the strife. If you don't get into strife based on this argument, all of that means is that you are on a Masonic rule. You're on a demonic rule. Mm -hmm. People who have taken advantage of these demons. Mm -hmm. So I guess we've run out of things to say about it in this video. So if you guys don't mind, let's continue the conversation down in the comment section. What do you think? Yeah. You know, let us know what you guys think um, about this lesson. Um, we can, I think you have a link to the Testament of Solomon down in the show notes. And um, we would like to hear what you guys say. Have you experienced this? You know, as far as any... Um, people that you've ran across that are Masons, um, what do you think about this lesson? We'd like to continue the conversation. All right. With that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.